So guys, today's episode, we're actually taking a look at a very affordable liquid cooler. The liquid coolers that we're going to talk about today is from Valkyrie. They have the A240 and also the A360, which I've already unboxed. You can check out the unboxing video in the link in the description below. These are the Valkyrie A-Series AIO. It's a liquid cooling solution that's all about high performance without overcomplicating the overall setup. So the Valkyrie A-Series AIO, personally for me, checks all the right boxes. What do I mean by that is actually that it focuses more on performance without fully compromising on aesthetics. The aesthetics part of it is very, is very simple. The AIO doesn't pack LED displays. It doesn't have over-the-top RGB panels and all that. But it focuses on what it really needs. Performance. But before we go on into specifications and performance and testings and all that, let's talk about compatibility. So Valkyrie has made sure that these AIOs fit LJ1700, LJ1851, AM4 and AM5. So if you're coming from the latest platforms for both Intel or AMD, Valkyrie has got you covered about it. You can find the mounting kits and whatnot in this small plastic bag that you can find in the box itself. This plastic bag has your screws, mounting kits, brackets, the Intel backplate, cables and whatnot. But don't be fooled by these cables. These cables are extra cables actually, if you ask me. Because the overall AIO comes with a singular cable here. This singular cable has two ends to it. Five volt ARGB and four pin PWM functions. So let's put this side first. So besides the screws, the back plates, and whatnot, they also include their own thermal paste. We've got a small tube of thermal paste. However, every AIO from this series has pre-applied thermal paste on it already. So this small tube is for those who are looking to replace their thermal paste. Now let's get that out of the way. So like I told you all, it skips out on LED displays over the top RGB. Therefore, the whole overall assembly process is fairly simple. All you have to do is just mount this to your casing, mount the pump block to your motherboard, connect the cables, Connect the cables to your motherboard and you're done. You don't need SATA connection, you don't need Molex connection, you don't need a control box, nothing like that. So Velcro has kept this whole thing very simple and direct. That's a good thing if you ask me. Because many times I feel overwhelmed by the overall assembly process of certain AIOs in the market. You've got control boxes, you've got this box, one box only fits three fans, one box only fits four fans and whatnot, it becomes a whole mess. Then you've need, you need another control box to control this, like you can see in Corsair systems and all that. So it's totally tiring if you ask me. And I appreciate the simple way Valkyrie has gone about for with this. So now let's move off to technical specifications of the AIO itself. First and foremost, you've got an aluminum radiator, a copper-plated pump block feature, the pump block is also rotatable. So depending on the orientation of your assembly, you can just rotate the pump to match it out. You've got three fans for the 360 version, you've got two fans for the 240 version. The thing here with this AIO is that if you look at the overall width of the fan and the radiator, you would realize that the fans are wider than the radiator. This is because of the retention bracket that the fan uses. So you got to take note of that when you're actually putting into a casing. 
Let's talk about that later on. Now let me talk about the fans. It's rifle bearing. Okay, that is the only issue I have with the fans actually, that it has rifle bearings instead of fluid dynamic bearings. I would personally appreciate if the fans were FDB because they tend to last longer and perform way better. So coming back to the radiator, it's made out of aluminium. It has an FPI count of 20. So these fans are fully capable of actually pushing air all the way through this radiator. More often than not, you will find that radiators are ranging from the FPI count of 16 to 18. But those are in custom liquid cooling solutions. For AIOs, you would normally tend to see 19 to 24. So the thing with FPI count is, the smaller the number, the better it is. Because the gap in between the fins is wider. So air can actually pass through way easier. So coming back to the pump, it's a proprietary design from Valkyrie. It has an RPM maximum of 2400 RPM. What does this mean is that given the occasional spikes in temperatures and all that with our processes, 2400 RPM is fully capable of shooting enough coolant through the pipes and through contact of the copper plate to keep your processes cold. So you do not need to worry about that. As for variants and options, Valkyrie has both black and also white. I'm sorry if you actually saw that I mixed up black and white here, but this is black, this is white. You also have 240 millimeters and 360 millimeters. So you've got plenty, four different types of options to choose from. So depending on your casing, depending on how large or how compact it is, Valkyrie has got you covered. So we've tested this AIOs alongside a few other AIOs. And if you actually look at the list later on, you would realize one thing. The AIOs that were tested against this aren't cheap at all. In Malaysia, those AIOs cost from a range of 680 all the way up to 1,800 ringgit. I've told you all about the pricing of the other AIOs. Let me tell you all the pricing of these AIOs. So the black 240mm can be purchased in Malaysia for RM229. You can get the white for RM235. As for the 360mm variant, the black is RM289, while the white is RM295. Yes, the pricing of these AIOs are actually, actually extremely cheap, if you ask me. It sits in a zone where it is populated by the ID coolings, by the thermal rights, by the TACWES in Malaysia. But we all know how those AIOs can actually perform when put to the test. So I decided to actually try this and test it in a whole different level. So I've pitted this against the Cooler Master Master Liquid Ion, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 and few other AIOs you would see in the list later on. So let's not waste much time, but before we move off to data and statistics, these fans on this AIO tested in our in-house testing system gives a decibel rating of 38 decibels. Valkyrie advertises, I think, 32 or 33 decibels. However, given the surrounding of where we are and where we are testing at, there is minor differences between that. However, it's not too loud if you ask me. I've heard louder fans, louder noise from PCs from this. So I think it's something we can actually look past beyond that. So now let's not waste much time and let's go off to the data that we have. So guys, you saw that. So our in-house testing, it's a fairly complex test because we use a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D that is capable of giving us 260 watts of power that is on software. But if you actually analyze and you gauge properly using the right power measuring devices, you would realize that the EPS sockets are actually pulling almost 300 watts of power through the motherboard. By testing the powers of the processor, you've seen yourself how that this two AIOs actually perform. They are fighting in a league that is not, that doesn't even belong to them, if you ask me. You've got 1,800, 1,400, 1,200 AIOs 
not even performing as good as these three hundred dollar AIOs. So it, what I would say is that you're actually just paying more for brands. You're actually paying more for aesthetics, but not really performance. If you actually after performance, then you know what was standing at number one there, keeping the processor the coolest. But coming in at second or third place were these toothless, and I would say, wow, I'm really mind blown with the way these AIOs perform. I'm actually really impressed, and I've heard of rumors that there is a newer AIO coming out from Valkyrie that is going to incorporate. LED screens and whatnot. If they do perform like how these AIOs have performed and they also come with LED screens and the pricing is right, it's going to be a really good product if you ask me. And that has actually piqued my interest, but I'm actually looking forward to that as well. But enough of that, let's talk about this now still. We're still in this topic, the topic of the A240, A360. So in terms of pure performance and the capacity to cool, Yes, the 240 cannot really efficiently cool the 9950X 3D, but it is still well within the operating temperatures of the processor. So you will not really face any issues with it. As for the 360, the 360 is where it becomes the cherry on top of the cake. It's amazing. It's going toe to toe with the Cooler Master Master Liquid Ion with the NZXT Krakens, with even the latest sensation, Trix Panorama. Like I told you all, those things cost a lot. So for this to actually overshadow them and give this kind of a performance, it's a great job. Guys, in my personal opinion, I really think that these AIOs are actually a great pick for mid to high end builds to keep your processor temperatures low and also without bursting your overall budget. These two AIOs also proves that you don't really need RGB or you don't really need over the top RGB or LED displays to make a build look good. So guys, if you want solid cooling, clean aesthetics and a simple installation, the Valkyrie A series 240 or 360 should be in your list of picks. Do not forget to like or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you all and see you all in the next one.